Well, good evening, everyone. I am certainly glad that you could be here this evening. Uh, we've tried to figure out exactly what it is that I that I do, and I finally realize I'm a storyteller. And uh, when I read the Bible, uh, I read it in, in the third person, the same way that it's written. I'm in the outside reading the story. And I like to think about the story from the inside. I like to, uh, when I tell a story, I want to become one of the people in the story and see what it was like for them. What, what happened to them uh, an hour before this story happened? What took place five minutes after this story happened? So that's the perspective from which I uh, tell my stories. A few days ago, I was out uh, in my shop doing some work. I was building a door, actually. Um, I'm working on a new house, and uh, it's, it sounds like something happened there. Anyhow, I, uh, I was working on this door. I was building this door, and I was uh, almost done with it. And I was putting the hinges on it. And uh, my mother-in-law came and visited me in the shop. Now that's normal because ever since I became uh, officially engaged to Mary, she made it a point to come and visit me every now and then, get to know me a little better. Of course, she knew me since I was a child, but uh, she stopped in that day, but she seemed a little bit different. Uh, normally, she's quite bubbly and talkative and a lot of chit-chat conversation, but that day she, she was a little subdued and she said, Joseph, do you love Mary? Now the question was kind of irrelevant because our, our, our marriages are arranged when we're children. Uh, she knew me as a child, thought I'd be a great match for her daughter. So uh, our parents got together and that arrangement was made a long time ago. But uh, she stopped in that day and, and uh, asked if I loved Mary and I said, yes, I do. And she paused a little bit and she asked me a second time, do you really love my little Mary? And I said, well yes, I just told you that I did. And, and she said, uh, please be kind to her. I said, okay, I will. And uh, she said again, Joseph, do you really love Mary? And I said, yes, I do. I do, and I'm looking forward to the time that, that our marriage can be, uh, uh, that we can uh, have our official marriage, we can come together, that I can take her to my house and we can live together. And she said, please be merciful with my Mary. And I thought, this sure is a strange conversation. I don't understand what's going on here, but she left. The next day, my mother came to visit me in the shop. Now, that was unusual because she could see me every day. In the morning and the evening, I was at home. But she stopped in and she said, uh, Joseph, have you been with Mary? And I said, I saw her last week, last Sabbath day. We, we spoke a little bit after the service. And she said, no. Have you been with Mary? I said, well, I stop at their house like once a week, you know, I, I want, just to visit, but you already know that. And she said, no, Joseph, have you been with Mary, alone, without a chaperone, privately? And I said, whoa, 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 what, what are you asking me here, mother? And she said, I was at the well this morning and I bumped into Mary. I literally bumped into Mary. She has a rather large belly. She appears to be pregnant. So now I understand what the real question is. Joseph, were you with, my, were you with Mary and did you make her pregnant? Well, all of a sudden these things are going through my mind as to, you know, what happened? Is, is, is my mother goofy? Is there something going on here? Is, is Mary, is she pregnant? Is there something else wrong with her? What's happening? And about that time, my mother said, you need to talk to Mary. And she left. 
Well, now it was quite a turmoil in my shop there. I, I couldn't work anymore because I was thinking about what was going on. Had, had somebody violated my future bride? Had she been unfaithful to me? What was going on here? I had lots of answers and, and, and the fear and doubt were starting to crawl up on top of my shoulder. Well, later that day, Mary came to visit me in the shop. I wasn't getting much dirt, uh, work done there with all these women coming to visit me. She came in and she said, Joseph, I have some marvelous news. And I'm thinking, marvelous news? What in the world is going on? And she said, I have, a, I have something to tell you. Uh, she said, you remember several months ago I sort of disappeared for a, a couple of months? I said, yeah. Well, I went to visit my cousin Elizabeth. And, well, let me, let me back up. Maybe, maybe I should tell you the, the, the rest of the story here. Uh, no, let me tell you about Elizabeth first. I, this is kind of difficult to get this across here. Um, Elizabeth just gave birth to a baby boy. Now you see, Elizabeth is beyond the childbearing age. But her husband, Zacharias, is a priest. And an angel came to him and told him that his prayers would be answered, that he was going to have a son, that Elizabeth would bear a son for him, and that she would name him John. Zacharias didn't believe the angel. The angel said, you will be tongue-tied and you will not be able to speak until the child is born, but you will name him John. He went home, after he was done there, he went home, a month or so later his wife became pregnant. Uh, he had to write on tablets to communicate with people. Six months into her pregnancy is where I come into the story, Joseph. At that point in time, an angel came to visit me. I was at home doing some house chores. Uh, my mother, Afia, and my, my sister, Thamar, had gone to the well. They were getting some water, and I was there at the house by myself. And the room lit up, and this huge man walked in. Well, he wasn't a man, he was an angel. And he said, he said, hello, Mary. You are highly favored, for the Lord is with you, and blessed are you among women. Well, she, she was, didn't know what to say. This, this person was standing or telling her these things, and she didn't know what this was all to, to, to mean. And, and he said, fear not, for you are highly favored of God. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son and name him Jesus. He shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give unto him the throne of his father David. And at that point I'm thinking, what, what is this all about? Uh, what, why are you telling me this, Mary? What, what is this? This doesn't make sense. And she said, Several months ago, like I told you, I went to visit with, uh, with my cousin. She was indeed pregnant. He was indeed tongue-tied. I stayed there until the baby was born. She did have that baby, and as Zacharias wrote on a tablet, his name shall be John. And as soon as he did that, he could speak again, and he praised and he worshiped God. So I know that's going to happen. But now it's my turn. What do you mean? Now it's my turn to have a miracle baby which was given to me by God. And I said, well, how, how do you, how do you, what's, she said, wait a minute, let me tell you the rest of the story. When the angel was there visiting with me, I asked him, well, how can I have a child? I don't have a husband yet. And he said that the Holy Spirit would create an infant within me and that the child would be called the Son of God. Now this may sound impossible to you, but your cousin Elizabeth, who is beyond childbearing age, is already six months pregnant. For you see, Mary, nothing shall be impossible with God. 
isn't that wonderful, Joseph? And I said, wonderful? I said, Mary, do you take me for a fool? Do you expect me to believe this story? And she said, well, I can't make you believe it. But I know this is what happened. I know this is what the angel told me. I know it's going to take place. And now it's my turn. It's my turn to have a miracle baby. I thought a few moments and finally I asked Mary to leave. I said, you just need to go. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with this, how to deal with this. You just need to leave. So she turned and she said, I just know that it's going to happen, Joseph. I just know it. So she left the shop and then I left the shop and I walked down the street and I got to the end of the town and I walked out into the desert, walked up on a hill and I sat down under a tree. I, I was angry, I was sad, I cried, I yelled. I said, Mary, what did you do? What's, what's, what's going on here? What am I going to do? I knew that I had to distance myself from her. I knew that I couldn't marry her carrying someone else's child. And this story about angels and the Son of God, I didn't know what was going on in her mind. I, I just knew that I had to divorce her. But if I did this publicly, I knew what would happen. She could be stoned for adultery. Stoned to death, that is. I didn't want that to happen, but I had no other idea as to what to do, so I decided to quietly divorce her. It was late. I didn't want to go home. I laid down on that hilltop, laid on, laid on my back, looked at the stars, and eventually I went to sleep. And that's when it happened. I started to hear voices in a dream. I heard a voice that says, Joseph, just take her to the gates of the city and declare her an adulteress and I will take care of all of your pain. And I said, no, I don't want to hurt Mary. And I heard this voice again, Joseph, just divorce her and I will give you a dozen women. And I said, no, I want Mary. And I heard this voice again that said, just refuse to marry her. And that will be the end of the story. And I said, no, I can't do that. And then I heard another voice. And the angel of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Joseph, thou son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child within her is conceived by the Holy Ghost. She shall have a son and call him Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sins. When I awoke, it was morning. I immediately went to Mary's house and I said, we're getting married today. I took her to my house. I got that door I was working on and I put it on that house. And we were married that day and we lived together from that point on. But I did not have relations with her until after that child was born. And yes, we did name him Jesus. But the story doesn't end there. You see, part of the reason I couldn't believe Mary was because I knew that the ancient prophecy said that the, the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. We lived in Nazareth. It was a week's journey. We didn't live there. So how could this child be born there? Well, lo and behold, Caesar Augustus sent out a decree and said that there should be a census within all the land. And then you, you would need to register for this census and pay a tax. And everyone needed to go to their ancestral home to register. 
I'm of the line of David. I had to go to the city of David, Bethlehem. Now the story started to come together. At this point, Mary was almost ready to have this child. I didn't want her to travel with me, but I didn't want to leave her there by alone, or leave her there alone by herself. I would be gone for at least two weeks to get there and get back again. She didn't really want to go either, but she didn't want to be there by herself. So we loaded up our donkey. We needed blankets for sleeping at night. We, we needed food, uh, food and water because we didn't know where we'd be spending the night. But we, we got him ready uh, and we set out on our journey. And we did have to spend two nights outside. Some of the other nights we were able to spend it at homes along the way. But when we got to Bethlehem, we saw lots of people camped out around the town because there was lots of descendants of David who were coming to Bethlehem to register. So we went to the inn in town, hoping that maybe we could get in there. But uh, they were full. But they said, there is, uh, there's some room out in the barn if you'd like to spend the night out there. Well, we were glad just to have a roof over our heads, so that's what we did. We, uh, we, uh, we found some clean hay there in the corner of the barn, off to the side, and we had our bed rolls, so we laid everything out there, and um, we, got to, uh, we got settled down, and uh, Mary was just getting comfortable, and all of a sudden she said, Oh, I think it's time. I said, time for what? <laughs> it's time! Oh! Oh, okay. Uh, 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 okay, l l let me go look for a, uh, uh, what, what, uh, uh, what's that, uh, a midwife. I, let, me go for, let me go for a midwife. <laughs> Not a midwife, a midwife. <laughs> I'm having a midwife. I need, I need a midwife. I, mean, I need someone. So I rushed off to the inn. <laughs> I rushed off, it has to be a comic relief somewhere, I, I rushed off to the inn and I said, my wife's going to have a baby, Where, is there a midwife in town? And they said, yes, down, down the street. So I went down there, I got the midwife, we came back to the barn, and by this time Mary was really starting to have labor pain. So the midwife helped her give birth that night, and after Jesus was born, uh, they wrapped him in, in claws like what we normally do with babies. And by this time, I'd gathered up some more hay and put it in the feed trough. And we laid Jesus in there so he could sleep. And so we could go back to sleep, or try. So I got our uh, bedrolls uh, situated again. I got Mary taken care of. And I had just sat down and was almost asleep. And I heard voices outside. So I got up to see what was going on. Well, here some shepherds had come down from the fields uh, looking for us. They said some angels had appeared in the night sky and scared the living daylights out of them. There, there, was, uh, there, there was an angel that, uh, that spoke to them and he said, Fear not, for tonight in the city of David, in Bethlehem, your Savior has been born, which is Christ the Lord. Go and look for a child wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. So that's what we did. We headed down to town. There's only one barn. Here you are. They came looking for us. The angel sent them to us. They stayed thus for there for several hours and, and worshipped Jesus and told us again what the angels had said about them. And when they left there, they went throughout all the town and all the campsites that were around town and they told everyone what the angels had told them. They gave them the message that Christ the Lord has been born today. Now the story does go on. There are more parts to the story. I could tell you about wise men and gifts. I could tell you about Herod and shepherds, or er, er, um, uh, soldiers. I could tell you about our flight into Egypt. But that's a story for another time. Thank you.